If you have your Bible, will you stand this morning? If you have, you take out your iPhone and iPad or whatever. Let's turn to 1 John, not the book of St. John, but 1 John. 1 John chapter 4, and we will look at verse 4 for today. But I want to start at verse 3, but we're going to key in on verse 4. Great verses of the Bible. In every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Wherefore ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Verse 4 for our text today. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We're going to talk about that verse today. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You may be seated. God bless you today. Today, as I continue on with my series of sermons on great verses of the Bible, you've already preached about they that wait on the Lord. And last time we talked about count it all joy. And we use for title looking at the upside of down, which has gotten a lot of people attention that I've been getting good reports on that message. And I ask God to continue to lead me as I explore uh, some of these great verses of the Bible, not text yet, but just verses of the Bible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And today is one of the most popular verses of the Bible that I have heard quoted by so many Christians. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We look around us today. We hear that slogan. We hear people talking about it. It's a great verse that I think you ought to put in your hand when you're going looking for a job, when you don't have nothing to write on, looking for a job before you get there. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This is a verse that you want to put on your coffee cup when you sit down and drink your coffee. Look at it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This is a verse you want to hang on your refrigerator. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This is a verse that you probably want to put in your car. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This is something when you're in prison and you're going before the judge and you're pleading your case and you don't know the outcome. Just put this in your pocket and while they're looking at your case, pull it out and read it. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. This is something you need to put when, you, when they give you a pink slip and tell you, you you're fired off your job. Get this verse and still look at it. When you're going home and don't know the outcome of your income, greater is he that is in me, that he that is in the world. This is something, preacher, when you're having trouble out your church and you go home and can't sleep, get up and find this verse and read it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This is what you have when you got witchcraft and enemies trying to pull you down and have you up all night and you can't sleep. i tell you how to go to sleep. Read this. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No matter how powerful the devil is, no matter how powerful demons are, hold on and hang on to this verse. 
take, take this verse and hang it on the lies of faith and let the Holy Ghost blow on it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If I can just get Christians to hold on to this verse. If I can get Christians when they're in a hospital to hold on to this verse. While your family member lying up there in that hospital, dying of something, all you got to do is take this verse and read it over them. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God help me this morning. I think when I read, read this and continue to read this particular verse in the Bible, I think about what John is saying to the church. He's saying to them, there's, there's false prophets out there, witchcrafts out there, false preachers and false teachers. And one of the signs that when you're dealing with the false people, they have the spirit of the Antichrist. And anti means everything against God. And we're in this day and age when people are coming up with all kinds of denominations. And uh, people are falling for all of this stuff. And people are going astray, following the Jim Jones crowd and all this other David Koresh crowd. And all of these people that come and claiming they are some God. And you have other people coming up claiming they are the Christ. The Bible said in the last day, many will come declaring themselves to be Christ when they are trying to imitate Christ. We are in this day and time today of the spirit world and some of you are going to people to look in your signs and read all of these things, entertaining the spirit world and, and you're entertaining false prophets and there are quite a few people out there now are trying to get your attention and, and talking about things that's unbiblical and many, many people are attacking the church uh, on social media and trying to down this grade the church and destroy the image of God, men of God and, and get this generation to hate God and hate the church when there's nowhere else to go. When we're dealing with false prophets that are coming today to try to sway people from God, I want you to know John is saying, regardless of the age we're living in and regardless of all these occults that's popping up all over the land, threatening in Christians, uh, murdering Christians in certain parts of the world, right now in China, they're taking down all the steeples off the churches in China. China. They are attacking Christians. I don't do any world traveling now because many times when I would go in the country, they would yell and tell me, don't come here with that Jesus stuff. And now it's getting worse. Soon the door is going to close that Russia is going to not allow Christians back over there. Soon China is going to shut the door. And we are near the end. And all these threats that we are hearing about what the devil is going to do and what the demons are doing and what's going to happen to us and all these things. I got news even during this pandemic and all the things people are saying is going to happen. The Bible has declared some of these things are happening, but whatever is about to happen greater is he that is in me than this spirit world. The thing that really gets my attention with this text, the key word to this verse to me is that is that the word in. Greater is he that is in in me. Now the reason that got my attention about the word in, I want you to look at this now. We spend more time on outward stuff than we do on inward stuff. We need to be concerned about what's in you and not what's outside of you. Most time we go and buy clothes, we're more concerned, we're more clothed on the outside and naked on the inside. Your soul's not clothed, but your body got on clothes. It's a bad thing when you spend all your time on the outward man and worrying about the flesh and worrying about things that satisfy just you. And you don't spend no time praying and you don't spend no time on the inner man. You got to be careful because if you spend so much time on the outer man, it's because of what's on the inside of you is that inner man. And that inner man is that spirit that's of the antichrist. That demonic spirit that's in you is making you do all that stuff on the outside of you. 
That's why, this, that's why he's saying, great is he that's in me, not out of me, but who's in me, because what's in you is coming out of you. And if what's in you is the flesh, and if what's in you is about worldly stuff, if what's in you is worrying about what people think, what people say about you, then that's because of what's in you. And I got news for you. There's going to be two people in you. One's going to be God and one's going to be the devil. Now, now, here's the point. You have to make up in your mind which one you want to stay in you. Because if you got the demon and a devil in you, God say, I'm leaving. God's going to walk right out of your heart and shut the door. Because God is saying, I don't want to reside where the devil is. When the devil get in you, he can make you do some crazy things. When the devil get in you, he can have you say things you never swear you'd say. I wrote down some things what happened when the devil get in you. When the devil get in you, make you cunning as a fox. Make you stalk people like a lion. Make you unforgiving as an elephant. Make you strut like a peacock. Make you slick as a snake. Make you pounce on somebody like a tiger. Make you laugh at them like a hyena. Make you hop around everywhere like a monkey. Make you growl like a bear. Slip behind and sting like a scorpion. Make some of them stubborn as a mule. When the devil get in you. When the devil get in you, have you coming in the church. All into yourself. Don't know what hallelujah means. Full of anger. Jealous of somebody in here. Mad at what another child of God, God blessed them with. And you don't know nothing about that struggle. But see, you see what God has blessed them with and you go to making all kind of accusations. That's when the devil in you. When the devil get in you, you wake up all time or night with bad dreams thinking somebody working something on you. See, that's witchcraft mess. That's what you don't allow to get in you. When the devil get in you, I have you not speaking to people. When the devil get in you, the, the gospel can hit and won't penetrate. It's like it hits your stubborn heart and bounce right off. When the devil get in you, you can't stand church. When the devil get in you, you don't like church. When the devil get in you, you hate Christians. When the devil get in you, you hate the man of God without a cause. When the devil get in you, you can't love your brothers and your sisters. When the devil get in you, you can't work with one another. I can't work with her. I can't work with him. But when you're a child of God, you can work with anybody. When the devil get in you, preachers won't preach. When the devil get in your singers won't sing. When the devil get in your choirs won't sing. When the devil get in your deacons won't deek. See, that's what's done got in you. But you see, you got to be careful what you let get in you. That's why this verse is so important to me. Greater is he that is in me, not on the outside. You know what happens when you get that liquor in you? Uh-oh, somebody said, oh, Lord. You all right until you get that liquor in you. Have you seen some folk, they so, they so nice, we don't have that lick in them, so calm, so peaceful, we get a few little nips, they're calling you all kind of names. Yeah, unholy stuff. And then when that, then that lick out, then they ate, I don't remember. I, I didn't say, did I? I said, yes, you did. <laughs> See, that's what that got in you. See, I all tell young people, or y'all are young people mad at parents because of what somebody said to them and got in you. You got to be careful the games you hang around. You got to be careful the people you hang around. That make you turn on your own mother. What could happen to a promising young man uh, making A's and all of a sudden drop out and hate his own people and get on? See, he got around some folk that let something get in him. 
And the only way you can keep from letting these demons get in you is don't entertain them. See, you got to watch it. Cause that, that devil, he, that devil is something. And I'm telling you right now, he ain't not, he's nothing to play with. He's been called all kind of names. He's called the deceiver of a nation. He's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's accuser of the brethren. He's the God of this world. He's the prince of the air. The Bible says he's a murderer from the beginning. He's the father of lies. He's the great tempter. He wants to be like God because he's jealous of God. He said, I will be like the most high. See, the devil is a jealous person. That's why the spirit of jealousy is so terrible. When you're jealous, you, look, you hate your own spouse. When you're jealous, you try to compete with one another. See, that, that old spirit again, you'll hate your husband, you'll hate your wife, you'll be jealous of what they wear, you'll be jealous of how they look. See, that's a terrible thing, and the devil is a jealous creature. The devil is so jealous, he hates God today, and he hates God's creation, and you got to be careful by hanging around envious, jealous people. Can I preach to you this morning? When you round, if you round mad folk, they'll have you mad and you don't know what you're mad about. That's that devil. Yeah, that devil, he gets in you. I'm telling you this morning, he's not recognized for nothing. Great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. He's not recognized for nothing because the devil is nobody to play with. Now let me tell you something, the, the dangerous things, if you're not careful, the devil get in you. One thing I'm finding out that makes the devil great as God to you, you give him too much credit. See, you need to stop, you need to quit going around talking about the devil made me do it. Flip Wilson. <laughs> quit, quit going around talking about what the devil made me do. And start, just start thinking about some stuff. You just did it because you want to do it. Little boy was playing with another boy. And he got mad with him and pushed him down in the ditch and spat on him. And his mother called him and came in the house and said, Why'd you push that boy down in the ditch and spit on him? You know you got the devil in you. The little boy said, Well, the devil may have made me push him down in the ditch, but the spit came from me. Oh, <laughs> that was my doing. <laughs> uh-huh. At least he admitted the devil didn't make him spit on the boy. That's his old flesh. Now the devil made it. He said, push him down. See, some of you all give the devil too much credit. Talking about the devil got in my foot. That's his old age. Oh, Lord, the devil in my arm. What you expect at 94? Hey, Amen. Stop giving the devil so much credit about what he's doing. He doesn't have no more power than God let him. Something, oh, the devil killed some folk in my family. No, dying is a part of living. We are born to die. The minute you are born, you're going to start dying. You got to get over the death of loved ones during this pandemic because the black plague killed millions. Amen. There were other plagues that took nearly a nation out. Europe was almost wiped out by the Black Plague. And think about the ones we've had before in this country. And why we've had to get vaccinated when your baby's born. Smallpox nearly wiped out a lot of people. This is not the first time a pandemic has nearly wiped out a nation. They didn't have signs. They burned people at the stake back in those days because they declared they were witches, innocent women that brought the plague on the world, giving it the credit to the devil. And these were innocent women that were burned by the stake when Bloody Mary burned a lot of folk to death because she didn't want no Protestant movement in her, in her time because they believed that Catholic was the only way. 
and she murdered so many people they call her Bloody Mary. Let me tell you something. The devil is busy, but something just the devil didn't do. I think sometimes the devil be in hell crying. And we ask the devil, what you crying about? I just wish these folk quit lying on me. I didn't do that. Amen. The more you keep talking about demons, the more you keep talking about these old devils, the greater their power becomes. The more you entertain them, the greater they get. You give them power. You quit talking about them. You quit entertaining them. You denounce them. You ignore them. You become fearless because greater is he that is in me. Why am I afraid of demonic powers when I got something greater than the devil? Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now, what makes God greater than the devil? Write it down. God made the devil. Now, the fact that God made the devil, God know how to handle him. And you're going to be afraid of the devil and all his, all his uh, warnings and what he's going to do to you because you go to church, because you're a Christian and calling you a fool. You believe all that old stuff, giving that church your money, making all, giving them preachers your money. I was saying the other day that a lot of people are upset about, uh, I'm so glad that God has raised up mega churches so that they can fly ministers in all parts of the world. Because the bigger they are, the better they can serve. When I had a little old small church in the country, couldn't pay me but $90 a, a, a month, I was grateful for that, but I had to work. I could not hardly be the preacher I wanted to be working on a job. I came home tired like everybody else worried. I didn't have no time to study and meditate and get in the word of God to bring them a message that could bless them. How could I get them out the ditch when I was in the ditch with them all week? I worked in Warner Robins Air Force Base. I worked in hospitals. I worked in nursery home, night shift. And I, I know the pain of that. And I feel sorry for those pastors that can't get in the word of God. Because you see, today, God raised up Many churches to become one into a mega church to do bigger things. And now they can fly in other parts of the world and preach the gospel. I already see this just happened the last 15, 20 years ago where churches became mega churches. And the ministers started being able to fly to the world. It's not about flying joyriding. We've lost two great preachers in their own plane. Here's the point. It's the spreading, the furthering of the gospel. God said in his word, when this gospel has been preached into all parts of the world, then the end is now. And I believe God raised those preachers up going all over in Russia, going all over in other parts where they haven't even heard the gospel. When I flew to Calcutta, India, and I stepped off that plane and walked in that church, uh, I did not even know I was the first Afro-American to ever preach in Calcutta. When I walked in there, they put the reef over me. They stood and said, he's the first Afro-American to preach in Calcutta. Sure, Martin Luther King went there to visit Mother Teresa and others, but they were never invited there to preach. I was invited there to preach by a conference of nothing but ministers. And I saw witchcraft. I saw demons that were growling at me and I laid hands on many and saw spirits cast out. And when I left India, they were begging me to not leave. And I saw all of that Hinduism and Buddhism and uh, 100 million people in one city. I saw them bathing out all in the lake. I saw hungry children running up begging for a penny. I saw cows walking all around like worshiping animals. And I saw all this, and I could see those who wanted to be Christian when I was preaching in there, they were bamming on the doors of the church and bamming on the doors there. Get out of here with that Jesus stuff. Oh, but let me tell you something. I come by to tell you today, God is greater. When I left, they were crying, please come back. 
God enabled me to fly in that air some 15 hours and get out from there and fly and went on to Singapore, went on to Germany. Listen, places where I have preached, I'm trying to tell you in Egypt is really something. I've seen mosquitoes that big in Cairo, Egypt. And I've preached. And let me tell you something. I've seen people more receptive to the gospel in places like that than we are in America. Because God is pouring out his spirit in these last days upon all flesh. And that's why I know the end is now. He raises it up so the gospel will get everywhere. Trying to teach you how the devil attack. Everybody else get a plane, fly everywhere else but the man of God. Let me tell you something. Actors, movie stars, football players, got their planes, fly everywhere. Hmm. Yeah. And if God bless you with one pastor, you keep spreading that word. High up through TBN and other media, the gospel is getting out. People becoming saved in countries never heard of Jesus. It's Bible being fulfilled. The devil doesn't want that. But he know he doesn't have but a little while. God made the devil. And the devil is jealous. That's why God's greater. And I don't fear the devil when I know the one who made it. Then another reason why I know God's greater than the devil, God can take him on. God can take him on. When the devil want to bother you and the devil want, I always tell children when you can't sleep at night and grown folk too. I dare you when you have a bad dream and can't sleep at night is get up and say, I plead the blood of Jesus. And, if, and then you quote this verse. <laughs> I dare you to plead the blood. Every time a spirit attack me in a dream, I get up and plead the blood, and before I know it, I'm asleep. And the only reason why that, because God is greater. And God can take the devil on. Some folk can't take on the devil, but you don't have to worry about God. He made it, and he can take him on. Have you ever heard some folks say, I can take him on? I don't care how bad they are, I can take him on. I saw in a little, when I was a little boy, great big old boy in the classroom, always woofing and bluffing him out how bad he was. He looked like he's about nine feet long. <laughs> and he looked like he weighed about 300 pounds. He woofing, woofed and woof. He ran up on a little old joker this tall. And everybody was scared of him. And I was too. And in high school. But a little old joker, he was riding that can on in the classroom, yes, threatening the teacher. Yes, Ain't nobody him, nigga. No. Ain't nobody can take me on. This little old joker got up out of there and said, I'll take him on. And we all got to looky. That little old man, I don't know if he went up on there, but went up around him. <laughs> but when that little man got through with that big man, he was lying on the floor. Yes, and he wasn't no taller than that. And you, I tell you what, he didn't come to class for about a week or two. <laughs> so the point is, somebody can take you on. But I got a God can take on the devil. I don't care how bad and bully he is. God said, give him to me. Give him to me. I can take him on. I can take him on. Because God is greater. And God can take on the any debt you got. God can take on any sickness you got. God can take on any enemies you got. God can take on anybody that comes up against a child of God because greater. Is this going to help you today? God can take him on. And you know why God can take on the devil? He's just a fallen angel. What I want you all to remember today about the devil, he's just an angel. And he's a fallen angel with that. Oh, he's mad at me today. But I'm so glad the devil is mad at me because when the devil gets mad at you, God is happy with you. 
Now, when the devil not met, then the devil is happy with you, then God must be mad at you. So you're supposed to be attacked. You're supposed to be disliked. You're supposed to be talked about. You're supposed to be put down, criticized when you're trying to do the right thing because the devil doesn't like what's right. When you're lit, listen, the closer you live to God and the, the more the enemy attack you. And I want to tell you something. Anytime, I don't care if it's husband or wife, child, kinfolk, mother-in-law, father-in-law, most of the times when you are steadily attacked by people on the job and attacked here and there, God is using the devil. Now some of you all don't realize that. That's why I know God greater than the devil. God can use him when he wants to. See, the devil is on a leash by God. And sometimes God will turn him loose on you just to make sure you know it's a devil. <laughs> Some of you all need to catch the devil so you'll know it's a devil. But what most saints don't realize, God doesn't want to kill the devil. He can use him because he's greater. He can make the devil obey him to give you trouble. Oh, you all miss it. If the devil not after you, the devil must have you. Because he's supposed to attack the saints. But every time, see, the devil, a saint is just like tea. You won't know what flavor it is until you put hot water to it. And sometimes when the devil go after you, that's when the flavor come out. The more heat the devil put on you, the flavor come out of Christ. Because the more you mess with him, the more he prays. When you think you got him, the more he's saying hallelujah. The more you think you're pulling him down, the more he's going up. Because God used the devil to keep you on your knees. God used the devil to bring out of you a prayer you didn't know you ever had. God used the devil to bring out of you a soul nobody ever thought of. The devil's job is to attack us. And why doesn't God stop it? God is saying no. I don't want to stop it. I want them to grow. I want my people to grow in grace. I want them to depend on me. See, when you know you got an enemy, you know how to keep your eyes open. But if you don't know you got an enemy, you go to sleep. God used the devil to test your faith to see if you really trust God or not. Always, you know, some of the greatest preachers are uh, made because they've been hurt. Some of the greatest singers that we have in the world are the greatest singers because they've been hurt. A lot of us are love Aretha Franklin. But Aretha was hurt by a man, deeply in her heart, never got married. I preached at the Father's Church, New Bethel. And uh, there are so many more people you know, that have gone through some hurt. The late great Mahalia Jackson was married and she got hurt. Amen. This is, this is help him out, you all. Going through something. So let me just say something. This message is blessing. Some of the greatest preachers in this world have had a lot of problems. And I often said this to Dr. G. Campbell Morgan. Wife went to hear a young preacher preach. And look at me. Don't, don't, don't get, get distracted. And when his wife heard this young preacher, she said, oh, baby, didn't that man preach today? 
And uh, Dr. Morgan didn't say anything. She said, darling, the young preacher was so awesome. Did you hear him? He said, yes. She said, wasn't he wonderful? He said, he was okay. She said, well, why do you say that? She, he said, he hasn't preached yet. And she looked at the great G. Campbell Morgan as his wife and said, why are you saying that? He hasn't preached until he's been hurt. The next time they heard the young preacher preach, the wife didn't say nothing. And Dr. Morgan didn't say nothing. And they were riding along. She said, well, what you think about him today? He said he preached. Why? He'd been hurt. Pain makes you strong. God realized that you got to go through stuff to bring out something in you you didn't know you had. And some of you going through some stuff, you, you don't have no idea how much strength you get developing. All the stuff you going through is making you so powerful. It's building you up so in the Lord. It's making you turn to God. It's making you pray. It's making you look to the hills for when coming your help. And even in this pandemic, it's making you realize that death is real. It's teaching us. Oh, God. I, I started to build a sermon on social distance. <laughs> no, I preach anything. And some of us during this pandemic need to know what social distance is. You need to start backing away from some folk. <laughs> you need to have some social distance from some liars. You need to have some social distance from some backbiters. You need to have some social distance from some folk that don't mean you no good. There need to be some social distance in the Christian life. Be ye separated from the world. Oh, God help me. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah to his name. Praise God. God can use the devil. That's why he's greater. And I'll tell you something else that makes God greater than the devil. The devil can't go no further than God what? Let it. Is this making sense? Yeah. Some of you don't know, the devil can't go no further. And I know I'm going to be talking about the devil so much, but that's need to be said. The devil, uh, <laughs> some of us, man, brother, going somewhere in here day. Amen. <laughs> I got brother, amen, here and brother going somewhere. God, I got to get this sermon out. The devil can't go no further than God let him. And I'm afraid that some saints don't even realize it. God's greater. And the devil can do whatever he wants to you like Job. All right. See, Job would have been taken out by the devil. Uh -huh. But when God brought up the, Job's name, yes, the devil didn't bring up Job's name. Right. When they were all meeting in heaven, the devil didn't say nothing. Yes, the devil walked around in heaven like all other angels. Yes, sir. All right. Sons of God going before God. Yes, sir. And God saw the devil and said, hey, Satan, uh -huh. where are you going? Yeah, yeah. He said, I'm just messing around. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's just like a player. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Don't never help. Get, you want your phone number, you don't never get his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> where you live? Oh, I'm just, I, I just hear go in there. I just live here in there. Don't want to be identified. <laughs> we got a little quiet here. The lady's grinning now. Well, what's your address? You know mine. <laughs> so the devil doesn't ever want to stay home. I'm going to and fro. No permanent address. Then God brought up Job. So look here. Uh, have you ever met a fellow named Job? He says, oh, yeah, I know him. I know all of them. God said, well, did you know he's perfect and upright? Uh -huh. Then the devil starts saying, oh, let's just talk my old plain language. God, listen, I know who you bragging on flesh. Uh -huh. You know he's made out of dirt. Yeah, yeah. 
Now, why are you going to go talk about knowing like him? I'm surprised to hear you saying that. Transcendent, immutable God saying, knowing like him? God said, no, ain't nothing like it. The devil said, okay, I tell you what, God, since you bragging on flesh, let me get my hands on him. And I'll make him curse you, not behind your back. Some of you all have cursed a lot of folk out behind the back, but not in the face. Now, that's bold when somebody will curse you in your face. Hello? And God said, the devil said, I'll make him curse you in your face. And you know what? God said, well, you can go ahead on and get him then. Go ahead. Go on and use it. But I can't get him. Why? You got AT&T security system around. Every time I get near him, bricks goes off. Every time I get near his window, the alarm goes off. When I come on the property, the alarm goes off. You got that heavenly Holy Ghost alarm around and I can't get to it. This is what God was saying. God gave the devil permission and said, sick him. I want you to, I listen, I want you to grasp this. You ought to be a child of God so on the level that God can say, Sick him. <laughs> you ought to live a life so that you are ready for the devil to give God permission to come at you. Because you ought to be able to say, send him on, God. Why? Great is he. Oh, God. Not by my power, but God's power. And Job was so powerful that the devil approached him, took everything he had. Why did God let him take everything he had? To see if Job loved God for material things. The devil will, God will allow the devil to test you losing everything you got during this pandemic to see did you love him for that? You lost your job. You lost loved ones. Did you love them more than God? Woo. God is a jealous God. Do you love your children more than God? Do you love your house more than God? Do you love your business more than God? God was telling the devil, sing it. He'll turn the devil loose on and guess what? If you're for real, if you love God like you say you love, you will go through it all and say, the Lord give it. I lost it, but I first had it. I, I, I lost it, but I, to lose it, I had to have it. So the Lord give it. God gave before he takes. The Lord giving and he taking away. Don't get mad at God for taking. Thank him for giving. See, we got to learn how to thank God for giving before he took it. We get mad for him for taking. We don't thank him for first giving. At least if you lost your house, you can say, I had it soon. At least if you had a good job and lost, you can say, I had it soon. Let me quit. This got to get deep. God allow that devil come to let you know he can't go no further than God let him. When you get this message, you'll start crying about I'm glad I got him in me. Now as I close this message, I want to say this something else to you. God is greater than the devil because of his attributes. God is greater because of his attributes. God is all wise. 
That is to say, he's all-knowing. God know all that is to know before it was ever known. Known don't even know nothing about known until it finds God. God is the knower and the known. And God knew before it was known. And God know before known knew what was known. God is wiser than the devil. He knows all things. So that's what might, makes God greater than the devil. The devil doesn't have the sense God got. Another reason why God is greater than the devil, another attribute of God, not as he all-knowing, he's everywhere. The everywhereness of God. He's going and he's coming and he's coming and he's going and he keep bumping into himself. See, God is wherever he look. Some folks say, our Father, which are in heaven, that's just to acknowledge where he is, but he's everywhere. God can't even look at a mirror without looking at himself everywhere. Somebody say, hi, God everywhere. I don't see him. Look around you. See the flowers? Don't you see God blooming? See the rain? Don't you see that's God falling? See the grass? Can't you see that's God growing? Hear the birds singing? Can't you see God singing? Hear that preaching, preaching? Can't you see God preaching? God is everywhere. And this is what makes God so much greater than the devil. And I want to throw this in for free. The devil can't be everywhere at the same time. People said, but the devil is everywhere. Yes, through demons. He got legions of demons. He took away a third of heaven. I don't know how many billions and billions of demons they are. But God, he only took away a third. <laughs> how many angels does God have? Trillions, billions, septillions. Quantillions. Till you run out of numbers, a number no man can number. I mean, God, look, I don't care how many demons the devil got. God got triple. But God don't even need his angels. He can just show up himself. He's even in hell. He's even in the heavens. God is everywhere. Where can I go from your presence? If I make my bed in hell, he's there. If I take ways to go to another part of the world, he's there. The fact that God is all-knowing, the fact that God is all, all everywhere, omnipresent, omniscient, he's also omnipotent. He's all-powerful. You know what? God's so powerful, he doesn't have to wipe you away. He can think you away. Wish I could think away some folks. <laughs> That's just how powerful God is. Now I'm going to wrap this up. How you know God is greater? He's greater in you. Greater is he that is in me. I'm not the one that's great. It's what's in me that make me as powerful because now that he's in me, I can be like him. You see, when you're God's child and he's in you, you start looking like him. When you're God's child, you start walking like him. When you're God's child, you start talking like him. You become like him. Because, you know, what's in the baby blood is what's the daddy. It's going to come up looking like it. It's going to have a toe like it, a finger like it. And if nothing, if a child don't favor his daddy some way, it's a dead cat on the line. Dead cat on the line. Dead cat on the line. It's going to have a finger like it. 
People always ask me why I'm saying that. The lights went out in New York City. All the lights went out. They didn't know what cut the lights off. So they went up and found a dead cat, got on the main line, and knocked out the power. And after that, I went to preaching a sermon. Dead cat on the line. Something wrong. Hallelujah. I ain't starting that, so I'm going to look in their folk eyes this morning. See who they look like. But you see, when God, <laughs> let me look and see if you mind. All right, let me look. Come on back. Come on back. Your mind just went somewhere. Come on back. So here's the point. When you become a child of God, you take on his characteristic. You start becoming Christ-like. You don't say things you used to say. You don't do the things you used to do. Stuff that used to make you do stuff, you won't do it. Because you got a greater power in you now that won't even allow you to do and cuss and fight like you used to. You're a changed person. Not you so much. It's the God in you. I'm trying to get folks to get this thing on the inside. The old folks say if it's in you, it's coming out. My time caught up with me. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. He's all God. And he's all knowing. And what happens when God gets in you, I want to tell you this before I close. When you got God in you, your pressure turns to power. You have to move from pressure to power. Going through something, uh, going through marriage problems, well, welcome to marriage. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> Just grabbing and fussing and yelling. That's it. I can't even tell you all laughing. You're fooling me with that mask on. I know you're laughing. You know what? <laughs> Nagging's part of marriage. Yeah, I'm in the church too. <laughs> you can't stay with somebody 20, 30, 40 years and just don't get mad about something. You all get married with nobody. You get mad at you. You're going to, two grown people not going to always agree. You know your wife going to tell you the truth about yourself, and you're going to tell her the truth about herself. Now, you know I don't care what you up there saying. You know I know you. That's marriage. Some people said, my marriage is like heaven. So is thunder and lightning. That's in heaven. It's bad being alone, and it's bad being married sometimes. Sad to be all by yourself looking at the wall, hugging the pillow, talking about Jesus is my boyfriend. And the Holy Ghost is my comforter. You know you need a man. Hello. Hello. You know you need a good woman in your life. And they're not going to all come made the way you want them. Marriage is about us. I preached this at a university one time. I said, I don't talk about stickability. They all look. I said, oh, you're laughing. That's not in the dictionary. I just made up a word. Stickability. And all the way you can hang in this class and hang with these classes is stickability. You got to have something that make you stick. And the only thing that one, I can talk about a lot of glue that you need in marriage. But one of the glue things you need that make you stick is understanding your mate. See, you need to learn who you're married to. And when you learn who you're married to, you know what to look for 
and know what to look over. Oh, God, help me again. And if you're married to a fool, mama, stay out of a fool's way. Mm -mm. Don't talk foolish stuff. Learn to mate. Learn that people got ways that's not going to be like the way you want it. Because if they do, they're being phony. And folks never got mad, they're being phony. When they say they love you regardless, <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Just putting up with you. Stickability. But that's what makes it. That's what makes marriage is not a lie. It's real. And when you get involved with somebody, don't come talk about, well, I can't get along with them. You don't even get along with you. You have to work at folk and work through things, forgive some stuff and let some stuff go, though you don't want to. Because wherever you go, two people are not the same. You're going to argue, you're arguing with your boyfriend. You put the boyfriend out. You ain't even married him yet. Oh, the rest of them, oh my God. I know you don't want to put the husband out. <laughs> you done put out 10 boyfriends. I know you put him out. <laughs> I mean, I better get off this because now I ain't getting no amen. Greater is he that is in me because God wants me to become an overcomer. I'm going to overcome this devil because God is in me. I can overcome his devices. You know, the main thing I need some of you all to realize about the devil, know how to deal with him? Know his devices. Know how he works. That can help marriage and everything else. He comes to divide. You don't know if you marry somebody that hasn't gotten over or hurt. Or somebody just doesn't like themselves. Or been called a name when they were young. You don't know why some people tall get inferior about their height. Uh-huh. You know tall people been called names? Tall and sloppy. Giraffes. We got to deal with young women who gets tall. Play basketball and make money, sister. You take those long legs of yours and you strut across the aisle and you become a stylist and learn how to get in the fashion show. My God. You take your looks and show some people how you can become with the right makeup made for your skin. I'm glad black women learn how to make up for their complexion. Some makeup doesn't look right on screen. Now we got people, dermatologists and others have studied what look good on black people, skin, the kind of makeup, see, we have never had that before. Right. To build our self-esteem up. And we got to feel good about yourself before you start liking people. If you don't like yourself, you don't like people. That's demonic. To hate the way God made you. Yeah, you a big sister? They got clothes for big sisters. You all talking about these big women, but they got a truck, and they got a Cadillac, and they got a house, <laughs> and you little and fine, they ain't got nobody. Oh, you mean as a snake. Big mama know how to treat that joke. God help me. What kind of sermon is this? Oh, no. 
Got to know how to treat him. I said this in counseling people. You got, if you're dealing with a man, your wife, you got to know how a man's heart is. You got to know his heart. A man's heart, a man's heart is moved by submission. A man's heart is moved by sweetness. Delicately. Sweet and kind. How do you think Eve got sent, I mean, uh, Delilah got sent? She made him feel good. Some of y'all just go on, hunt your wife, hunt your wife. <laughs> she made him feel good. And I kept trying to explain why God said, obey the husband and love the wife. You make him feel like a king. And the best way to do that is submission. Obey him. Just be, use what you use when you got it. When you first got it. You told them all kinds of lies. You the greatest, you the... <laughs> you rubbed this big old bus and this my play bed. You, know? <laughs> you said things you know you didn't mean. But it worked. And they married you. All this we don't understand why the Bible said it. Obey him. You married him. Why not? And why not love her? That love going to come out from that kindness. Kindness beget kindness. Anger beget anger. Get mad, I get mad. The problem we don't understand is hard to do. That's not easy to submit. But that's what moves God. And when we submit, watch this close this here. Submit to God and resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. I had to throw some Bible on that. But we always talk about, excuse me, uh, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Look at what James 4 said. Submit yourself under God, then resist the devil, then he will. Don't worry. It's going to be ups and downs wherever you go. But the devil has no power because of God's power. The devil is great, but God is great. I think God wants the devil to be great. To show you he's greater. The devil is so great until he got an army to wipe out God's people. And God got him to the Red Sea and opened it up to show though Pharaoh is great, God is greater. He let them cross the Red Sea. But watch this. God let Pharaoh on. Go after them after they got on the other side. Be careful about trying to do what other people do. Crossing is not meant for you. Staying on the other side is meant for you. But when you try to cross where somebody else crossed, you went where they want, you want desiring to go. And they went out there following after God's people and got drowned. Because God said, I'm greater. Nebuchadnezzar was great. He built that image and he told the three Hebrew boys, I'll put you in the fire. And they put them in the fire. But God's showing I'm greater. I don't have to keep you from getting in the fire. I just get in there with you and make you fireproof, greater. They put Daniel in the lion den and God let the devil do it. And God let them throw Daniel in the lion's den. But God got on there and must start doing lion talk and said, touch not my anointing. It better you be in the sea with a little stone about your neck than to mess with one of my little ones. And if God will mess with you by messing with his little ones, I wonder what he'll do to you by messing with his big ones. God said I'm greater. And then wrapping this up, 
God decided to show his power. I'm greater than he that is in you, than he that is in the world. The devil so great, they took Jesus. They condemned him in an unjust court. They led him from hall to hall. They led him from before Pilate who intimidated him. But God is greater. Call his Roman soldiers, hostile religious leaders. They took Jesus and they stripped him of his garment. Put on him a seamless robe. Led him on up Golgotha's hill. Oh, the devil is so great. They nailed him in his hand. And they nailed him in his feet. And they laughed at him. And said, ha, ha, ha. You save others, but you can't save yourself. He hang right there and let man do his worst to God's best. And he kept hanging their own cross of cavalry. They hung him high and they stretched him wide and they dropped him low. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he wouldn't say a mumbling word. He stayed there on that cross, looked over and saw one man who was dying and told him, don't worry. He said, Lord, when you come to your kingdom, remember me. He looked over and said, brother, look down and said, mother, looked up and said, father, father, into thy hand. I commend my spirit. Left his hand in something greater than all state. Somebody said you're in good hand with all state. But when you fall in God's hand, you're in sure enough good hand. Chopped his head between the locks of his shoulder. Gave up the ghost. Died on Calvary. Hell had a party. Demons came all around. And they marched around Calvary. And looked and said, he dead. Demon said, shake him, he dead. Another demon said, look at his side, he's bleeding, he dead. And they declared it over. The devil is greater. On a Sunday morning, on a Sunday morning, before the rooster could get up and crow, on a Sunday morning, he got up early. He got up early, woke up from his grave, locked death in hell to his chariot wheel, came round out Sunday morning soon, and declared all power is in my hand. God is greater. Are you facing your cavalry? God is greater. Are you facing sickness? God is greater. Are you facing death? God is greater. All power. He said, all oh, power, not some power, not a little power, but all power is in my hand. And all I can say in these last days, ride on King Jesus. I don't want no music. Ride on King Jesus. No man can hinder me. Whatever's going on today, and I look at the news and I see the media. All I can do is say, ride on, Jesus. The day is coming. He's going to show the devil he's still greater. Yeah. Bible said in the last day the Antichrist will come on the scene. Yeah, yeah. And he will try to imitate God and be like him with his false prophet. Oh, but when the devil, through the great tribulation period, has nearly wiped out all God's people and goes after the Jews. They will run to Petra. And at Petra, they will hide in the rocks from the Antichrist who declares he's greater. But oh, while the Antichrist has nearly wiped out all God's people during the great tribulation period, oh, one of these old days, the sky will be cracked. He will come on the clouds. And he will have the saints of God that were wrapped it up with him. He will come down on the Mount of Olives. And when Jesus come back, the Antichrist think he's great. He will stuff his foot on Mount Olive and it will crack wide in two. And out of his mouth will come a sword like a two-edged sword. 
it will destroy the armies of the world and the Antichrist. And then they're going to call him Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Greater is he. Greater is he. Greater is he. Greater. 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 God is great. Greater, I say. Greater than your debt. Greater than your enemies. Greater. 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 How great thou art. Come on, sing for me. So. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I don't care about your debt, your sickness, your pain. Your enemies may be great. God's greater. Listen, he got it all under control. History is his story. And everything going on is God's big picture of how he designed it to be. Greater is he that is in me. Whatever you face it. Everybody say it. Everybody say it. It is One more time. One more time. I may be looking at somebody today, feel that you've been defeated by the enemy. Give yourself to God. I know you have problems. Welcome to the human family. I know you're struggling with some things. That's all a part of living. But God is not always going to move away some stuff. He's going to give you strength to bear it. Temptation is not a sin. It's yielding to it. Stop hating yourself and start looking for the power of God to get in you some things God's not going to move. 
Some people in your life, God not going to move. It is what's bringing out what's really in you that has put you where you are. Think about it. Some tragedies and some things and some people in your life, God has used it. And you know what? Let me tell you something. You are not going to get away from it when God wanted to be there. But what he wants to do is show you why he hasn't moved some stuff, he's greater. He can hold you in it. He can keep your health while you're in it. He can keep your mind clear while you're in it. He can keep you even working on a job and prospering while at one time you're about to burst open. God develop all that in your life to make you the strong person you are. To show you he's greater than the devil. And the only one word, the only one way you're going to deal with this enemy is the way Jesus dealt with it. The word of God. When the devil came at Jesus, Jesus put the word on him. It is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. The word got to be in you. And when you get that word in you, a lot of people don't read the Bible, don't know no Bible, and don't want it. But you got to know the word because when you get the word in you, you know the devices of the enemy. The Bible teaches you how he works. He comes to oppose. He comes to put you down. He comes to test your faith in God. He wants to make you think God doesn't hear you. The devices of the devil. And you start saying, Lord, I pray. Why you didn't do this for me? Why you don't answer my prayer? I have answered it. You know how God answers prayer sometimes? Through silence. Sometimes he won't say nothing. But God speaks in silence. And all you have to do is just don't quit. Don't quit. Why something like, sometime I want to throw my hands and say, Lord, I'm 70 years old. I want to retire. I'm tired now. Tired, go home, do what? That's the devil. Oh, they don't want me no more. My season's over. They get a young preacher. The devil be telling me that all the time. And every time I see when God get through with me, he would have stopped me. God said, I told you where I want you to be. You let me decide. When they tired, I'll let you know they tired. And I remember still supporting this pastor in this church. That's telling me enough. Let me tell you something. When God wants you to do something, he'll provide a way for you to do it. Don't quit. Because something, the reason why you are being blessed, you won't quit. And the minute you quit, God will let his hand pull. Don't quit. The devil said quit. I'm going to say this one thing on my heart about the devil. Let me tell you something. Everybody sent a list. Don't, say, don't play another thing. Listen. The devil had a sail on once. And he had a sail on what he wanted to put up for sale. And all the demons came down with the devil in hell. Said, and there was a man down there with him. And the devil said, you want to buy some stuff? The man said, well, not really. He was one of those bad demons. He looked up, he saw jealousy. He said, Satan, how much is that? He said, you can have that oh, about $10. You can have that. He looked around. He saw Envy. He said, well, what's that over there? He said, that's Envy. How much is that say? He said, you can have that about $15. He looked around. He saw Doubt. He looked up there and he said, Devil, wait, wait a minute up there you got for sale. That's Doubt. Can I, can I buy that? He said, yeah, you can have that about 30 bucks. Then he looked up and saw a strange object on the wall. He said, Satan, what's that up there? He said, it's not for sale. He said, why? Not for sale. 
He said, but why? You got it up there. It's my best weapon. He said, well, what is it called? It's called delay. Delay. Just keep putting it off. God, the devil said, all I want these folk unsaved to say is one day. I'll get right. One day I'm coming to church. One day I'm going to give myself. And the devil said, I just want to keep saying one day. And that's not for sale. And the devil wants you to keep saying one day I'm going to join the church. One day I'm going to give myself to the Lord. And one day will be too late. Give yourself to Jesus now. And if you'd like to join the church, if you're in another state, we provide it where you can join the church and not be in Atlanta. One joined last week from California, another one. You can join our church and say, I'm connected with Pastor Fleming at Mount Carmel Baptist Church, and that's my pastor, and we will send you a membership certificate with my signature on it. Welcome to our family, wherever you are. We just want you saved. Amen. And remember, God is using you for somebody else to see. Okay? I'm Pastor Timothy Fleming, the pastor of Mount Carmel Baptist Church. I thank you for tuning in to our broadcast today, and I hope this message will sink deep down in your heart and share it with people that are talking about the devil is so great. God is greater. God is good. In this church? God bless you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Go out praising God. <laughs> <laughs>